Hi, I'm Professor Don Patterson, and we're continuing our sequence of coding videos on how to make Reversi as a web application. In this video, what we're going to do is pick up on our URL parameter manipulation, and we're going to adjust our code so that the file that we just requested, lobby.html, with a URL parameter or IRI parameter, is going to be changed so that it can get that data and it can do something with it. So let's see what we've got right now. Right now, if we have our web page here and we enter in our username and we go to our lobby and we add our additional username equals DJP3, lobby doesn't do anything with it. And that's what we want to modify right now. All right, so for starters, the first thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to make sure that our lobby file also has access to um, the JavaScript, to the jQuery library that index has access to. So we could go back to the Google hosted libraries and the SRI hash checker and get it, or we can just go to index.html and grab the code that we added before. So I'm just going to do that. I'm going to grab that code. I'm going to go to lobby and I'm going to put it at, after the bootstrap script tag, clean it up a little bit. And that's going to give our lobby.html access to be able to use um, jQuery. Now, the next thing that we're going to do in this file is we are going to um, link in an external JavaScript library. So after this, we're going to use a JavaScript library that we're about to write. And we have to put it in a particular location. So we're going to um, make a directory for it, assets.js for JavaScript. And then we'll call the file main.js. Close that tag, and we should be good to go. We don't need an integrity. Um, attribute because this is code hosted on our uh, file system. All right, then what we're going to do is we're going to, um, so imagine if you will that lobby is getting loaded, we have the IRI, and we're going to want to take the information from that IRI line, we're going to want to put it somewhere into our document. So let's put a place in our document object model where we can store that information that's coming in. So let's make um, let's make another row, and let's not make it green. So we'll get rid of the header row text, and let's not make it centered. We'll just have one column in this row, and we're not going to say lobby. Instead, we'll say messages, since these will be messages that are coming in, and we'll make it maybe H4, so it's not quite as bold. And then this is where we're going to put a place for our messages to be stored. We'll make a div tag. We'll give an ID of messages, plural, and double quotes. And then we'll just leave that there. So right now, if we render it, what we'll see is we'll see just messages. And there'll be a blank spot there. And we can actually go and do that. If we re reload it, you see messages, but there's nothing there. We still aren't manipulating the top here. So let's do that next. Down here, we referenced assets.js main.js, but we don't have that file. So we need to make that. So under assets, let's make a directory called JS. Now, I'm, I actually already did this beforehand, so I don't have to do that. It's present here. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a new file, and I'm going to call that main.js, which is where we're going to put our code. Let me open that up. The code that we're going to put there is going to be the code that's able to get the information from the top of our URL. So we're going to do that with the help of a function. So let's create a, in this file, let's go ahead and create a function and we'll call it get the IRI parameters. Get an IRI, get an IRI mm, parameter value, parameter value. And then what the way this is going to work is when we call this, we're going to say, hey, what what key do we want? So we'll say requested key. And so the requested key is going to be username when we call this. We're, let's pull out from our web page what our current IRI is. So this will this will be the entire IRI that has username equals DJP3 on it. And we get that by calling window.location.search. And we're just going to ask for the piece. Um, we're just going to ask for the piece that comes that has the uh, after the question mark, the piece after the question mark. So that's what we're getting right here. Um, next, what we're going to do is we're going to split it up, and we're going to split it up into all the different variables that are present. We're going to take what we had before, and we're going to 
we're going to split that string on all the parameters. So they, we know parameters by default are separated with an ampersand, so we're going to break it up into all the chunks of strings that are separated by ampersands. And then we're going to go through them one at a time. So we'll make a loop, let i equal 0, while i is less than page iri variables, and the length of that dot length, we're going to increment i by 1 each time, so i++. plus plus. Then we're going to see what the data is that we have. We're going to get the page IRI variables that we just pulled off the top. And we are going to look at the particular one that we're looking at in the loop right now. So that will be I. We will split them on the equal sign so that we can get the left and right hand side. Single quotes, equal sign. Good. And then we will say what the key is. And the key is going to be 0, data 0 and the value is going to be data sub 1. Now, if the key if the requested if the key that we see right now equals triple equals the requested key that was passed in from the parameter, then we're going to return the value that we found. And then I think that's all we need for that function. So that won't get called yet. When we load up our main.js from our HTML file, we do need to we need to immediately check to see what that username is. So let's capture that in a variable, uh, and we'll we'll use the function that we just made. So we'll say get iri parameter value, and we'll say hey tell me what is the value associated with the key username. So we're going to look lobby.html is going to look at its iri, try and find username, see what follows it, the username equals, and then store that in the username variable. We're just going to check to see if it's there. So we're going to use that same code that we used in server.js. We're going to check to see if uh, the type of username is double equals, single quote, undefined. So if we didn't find it, two vertical bars for or, um, or username, username, make sure you get the spelling right, triple equals null. And this, this is a case when we go to lobby.html and there isn't actually any username there. And what we'll do is we'll just create a temporary username. And we'll say that that's equal to double quotes anonymous. And we'll put an underscore there and a double quotes. And we will add an add sign. And what we're going to do is we're just going to create a random number. So we'll say math.floor, math.random, open close paren times 1,000. And that'll give us a random number between one, integer between 1 and 1,000. Finally, let's demonstrate that we were able to pull it off the IRI by putting it into the document object model. And so we'll use jQuery, and we will find the ID in our document object model that is named messages, hashtag messages. And we will prepend that particular div with some new HTML. Why don't we use a bold tag? So we'll do a bold tag in single quotes. And then when we do a plus outside that, we'll add the username that we just constructed. We'll add a plus and a single quotes, a colon to make it look like they're speaking, and then a close B tag for closed bold. And if we save that up, and we didn't make any errors, then when we go to our lobby.page and we're able to refresh it, we see that it is able to pull the DJP3 off the top. So let's go back one. We're in reverse i, we'll say um, tester, and we'll hit enter lobby. Tester is at the top, lobby calls the code inside main.js, pulls tester off, and drops it there. So that's exactly what we wanted to demonstrate, that we could pass information from one web page to another by putting it into the IRI bar up there, or the URL bar. So that's everything we needed to accomplish for this chunk. Thanks for your attention. Thank you.